Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to episode number 68 of the Other Six Podcast. My name is Chad Boak, and I am your host. Joining me once again in the studio, my co-host, our worship pastor, composer of the Kenny Loggins-inspired Christmas album entitled Highway to the Manger Zone, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Collins. Matt, how are you today, sir? Copyright on that one, man. <laughs> also joining us in the studio today, once again, our lead pastor, Adam Bishop. Adam, how are you, sir? Mary rode a donkey on that highway, didn't That's she? right. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, yeah. I see, I can't Danger do it like zone. you, man. I try. <laughs> I try to come up with one that would fit with it. It just doesn't work when I do it. But, no, it's uh, all good. I'm good. Glad to be here. Good. Yeah. So uh, Christmas season full underway. How was y'all's yeah. weekend? Any sort of Christmas celebrations uh, or celebrations otherwise? A lot of Christmas parties. A lot of Christmas yeah, parties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hanging out with friends. You're such a social guy. Every, you are. Everybody, wow. everybody <laughs> wants to invite you to their party. That's good. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Adam? <laughs> well, we had our staff Christmas party. We did. That's the only one that's I right. got invited to this yeah. year. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> actually, no, that's not true. We did get invited to one of the life groups in our church, invited um, us, but okay. it was the same night as our staff okay, Christmas party. Gotcha. Yeah. But we had a great time. Yeah, with all the team. Yeah, yeah that was amazing. Spouses of the staff. And so that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, we all left with a gift, yeah, which was good. Did a little what, what is it white elephant or sneaky santa it's, like it, what what it, do they call it it's whatever yeah like, but, but it, there was nothing it wasn't like ill intentioned or bad gifts yeah, they were it wasn't good gifts the kind where you buy like the stuff that you're supposed to um like the bad, yeah, the bad gifts yeah 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 they bought good yeah. gifts gag yeah. gifts yeah. gag gifts there you that's go. what we're looking yeah. for that's why we came out on so, here yeah uh, <laughs> the one time yes <laughs> you did it bud so that was fun and then friday we went to see elf with the pike road theater company oh yeah, oh, yeah. a musical isn't it yeah a yeah. musical and everyone in the musical both the kids and the adults some all live here um, I guess in Pike Road, maybe a yeah. few of them live in East Montgomery. It was fantastic. Good. It was really, um, really talented. I mean, this yeah. kid was up there singing. I was like, oh my goodness. And uh, I'm like, Jacob, do you know that kid? He's like, yeah, he's in fifth grade at my school. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so um, they played Michael, you know? And, yeah. Um, yeah. And um, Buddy the Elf was one of the teachers at the school. I was blown away. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and again, these are just, you know, everyday folks who uh, yeah. have other jobs and they're giving <laughs> yeah. their time. And it was really good. We had a great time. Now, did they have the line from the movie where he's like, Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Because oh, that yeah. is that oh, is yeah. my favorite line from that movie. <laughs> they, <laughs> I mean, listen, man, they they rolled out like different props yeah. for different set designs. Yeah, that's awesome. So they had the office setting. And so, oh, yeah, he awesome. totally answers the phone and says that. <laughs> it was great. really good. Great, great job. And we had a great time as a family. Well, yeah. good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So I, I, I do want to talk a little bit about more Christmas in just a second. Okay. But before we get to that, we have to acknowledge Matt is here with us. And there was a pretty big event that uh, yes, happened. I am. I'm here with you uh, guys. Uh, yesterday, the World Cup had its finale. Yeah. So, Matt, we need our update from on, on the World Cup, buddy. Argentina won. Okay. Now, King the, Leo took it home. So, explain that to me as someone who has no idea about soccer in 30 seconds or less. Uh, <laughs> I can't do it in 30 well, seconds. He's, he's, yeah, he's, I mean, he's known more by Messi. Yeah, okay. Messi. King Leo. Messi, all right. Messi. Messi. All right. Yeah. So the crowning he, jewel of his career. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Come on. And, and he did something significant, though, is what yeah, I he understand. Yeah, broke, okay. he broke a uh, record. Most goals scored in uh, the World Cup. Okay. So, yeah, I think he wound up with 14. All right. So, yeah. Pretty pretty exciting ending to the World Cup, from what I understand. Yeah. So, yeah. went to penalty kicks. Went to yeah. penalty kicks, yeah. Okay. Um, Very cool. Yeah, and they 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 brought it home. Argentina. So, what are you going to do now that the World Cup is done? Like, what what <laughs> what sort of sport or what catches your attention now? Uh, I'll just watch more soccer. Okay, all right. Well, fair enough. Well, <laughs> I was year round. Mbappe had a hat trick in the yeah. losing effort. I just wanted to say, <laughs> well Mbappe, done, Mbappe. Yeah. Yeah. from France. Yes, yeah. from France. Well, so. that's good. Well, I'm I'm glad you got to enjoy that a little little Christmas present for Matthew yes, over there. Yeah, yes. that's a good. friend of mine was there. Oh, he really? posted some pictures really? on uh, social media. Okay. He's like, you know, dream come true to get to see this in person. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was really it was, cool. Like it the was, finale, he was yeah, there. Yeah, he was oh there my at gosh. the finale. That's it was really a cool. great game, I'll just say that. Well, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But it is Christmas season, and so I thought it would be fun uh, before we get into some of the questions on the podcast today to talk a little bit about, like, Christmas traditions. Like, so do you guys have any kind of Christmas traditions? And I'll go first okay. uh, to give okay. you guys some time to think because I, I did kind of spring this question on you. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Heads up would have been nice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So what my family does, I mean, we'll talk Christmas Eve into Christmas. So uh, we always come up here to the Christmas Eve service this Saturday at 4 p.m., if anyone's listening. And uh, and it's a fantastic uh, time. Looking forward to that this weekend, the candle lighting. the And we'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the podcast. Um, but then after the Christmas Eve service, we go over to uh, Miyako, the Japanese steakhouse here in town, uh, with some friends of ours. 
and we eat dinner there. It's kind of like you remember in A Christmas Story when they go out for uh, the, the Chinese food that day on Christmas because mm-hmm. the dogs come in and ruin the turkey and all that. Yeah. So this is like our <clears throat> higher class version of going to do do that. Eating at is a this nice one of the places house. they build the volcano with the onion yeah, and hibachi. it explodes? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you do that on Christmas Eve. We do that on <laughs> Christmas <laughs> Eve. And, and it was really funny because for the first couple of years, like our daughters were scared of the fire, so they would hide under the table. Okay. They didn't like that. Yeah. But we like the food, so we went anyway. Yeah. We're like, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> They'll be okay. That's yeah. right. So then afterwards, we go home, we change into Christmas pajamas, and we get hot chocolate and popcorn and drive around looking at Christmas lights. Okay, I feel man, like the yeah. worst father on the planet right <laughs> yeah. now. But keep going. Okay, <laughs> really, sure. this is fun. Just dig it so in, man. <laughs> then what happens the next? So the girls all go to bed, and then uh, the next day we wake up, and at some point on Christmas Eve, Christy and the girls have made a happy birthday Jesus cake, and we wake up, we sing happy birthday what kind to of Jesus. Cake is it? Uh, it's just like a white cake with uh, you know like mm, cream cheese okay. frosting, right. I think. Right. And uh, and then we have cake for breakfast, and then we open our presents. So that's that's kind of our our Christmas tradition, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I, we look forward to doing that every single year. So yeah, how about you guys? You go ahead, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know what to say um, other than. Christmas is when I work. <laughs> so I my family has just had to learn how to deal with that. So okay. I, I don't turn the work switch off until literally um I don't know, about eleven o'clock Christmas yeah. Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That's you know, true. we're working all the way up through Christmas Eve and you probably feel a lot the same way. Yeah. Like and so I get home, I try to decompress a little bit. And usually at that point, realize there's something I didn't get done for the family <laughs> that I was supposed to do. Yeah. So we're not eating special meals, certainly not putting on PJs and driving around looking at lights. Oh, that's pretty fun. I'm trying to get the kids in the bed uh. so that I can cover my own, you know what, to make sure I got everything taken <laughs> care of. So point in case, last year, um, I bought the the boys a basketball goal. That was their big okay. gift. Yeah. Now, this is such a crazy time of the year. I kept yeah. putting it off. I got to put it together. I kept putting it off. got to put it together. So about 11 o'clock last year on Christmas Eve, I start putting a basketball to go- goal together. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to do that by yourself. That is not, not a one-person yeah, no, job. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. sleep. <laughs> I literally was up all night and about six o'clock hopped in the shower and oh um, my goodness and was there like waiting for the kids. So like that that's you know, that's honestly usually my Christmas tradition is okay. work, 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 work. Oh, what did I forget? <laughs> Get that done too. There you go. And then when Christmas Day starts, then I kind of kick into relax okay. mode. Mm. We always have Christmas Day as a family. Right. So we've kind of told the extended family, we'll see y'all later. Like, give me one day. So I got one day with Morgan and the boys. That's one of my favorite days of the year. And so we get to be together all day as a family. And then we're always going somewhere December 26th. Yeah, and yeah. at that point, it starts the, <laughs> the all travel the mode, huh? Christmases Traveling. that we have to hit yeah. up. Yeah. And it's fun because, you know, the kids get to see their cousins and grandparents and, and all that. But, um, good. yeah, I, I honestly have never felt like a worse dad than right now in this moment. So I'm grateful. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Chad Sorry. For, Thanks, and this Chad. might turn into a therapy session where, like, I now begin to unpack the future conversations my boys will have with their therapist <laughs> when they talk about He's their dad who always now. worked on Christmas. But, hey, thanks for bringing it up. I'm yeah, grateful. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. problem. Sure. Matt, what are you sure. doing for Christmas? <laughs> well, we, man, dang. How do you I follow j- that? I, I, I kid because I care. Yeah, no, I'm glad good. you brought this uh, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Not really. So, <laughs> so uh, we just traveled down to Gulfport, and I think the only – tradition that we really have is uh, food boxes. So instead, food boxes. Of, instead of giving everybody individual gifts, okay. we, we just do White Santa or whatever. What is it? White Elephant? Yeah, what, yeah, I don't know I don't, the don't name know. of Sneak, it. Sneaky Santa. One of those, whatever yeah. the name is. Said name. Gag uh, gifts. Ga- <laughs> yeah. And we make like food boxes, uh, you know, stuff that people would actually want. Sure. And, you know, it's usually themed. So... Um, I'm going to start a new men's ministry every Christmas Eve. Meet up at my house. <laughs> Help me figure out what I need to put <laughs> together. You forgot. Yeah. Sorry, I just interrupted you. No, I just popped good. in my head. There's going to be an opportunity here. Yeah. All right, so uh, you're putting together food he's boxes. He's working again on Christmas yeah. Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Working yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just food boxes. So, okay. Yeah, I did like, Mandalorian. What goes, in, what goes into a food box? Like, so I did the a Mandalorian I mean, food, I'm assuming, but like, is it they're themed, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, mine are because it helps me make the box. Okay, I got you. You know, you could do like a date night, so like. Yeah. Popcorn, you know, fancy popcorn or whatever. Gotcha. gotcha. That kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, 
But that's all well, that goes well, very into. Very cool. Well, awesome. Well, we did continue. <laughs> Look at Adam Maria. He's still over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. I, okay, didn't, I, did, no. I didn't mean to put it's you okay. in that situation. Maybe we'll do the PJ thing this year. It'd be and fun. We'll follow your vehicle. <laughs> you know where all the good spots are. Dude, That'd be great. I walked downstairs this morning, and Lena had dressed our our dog Brandy, her mm-hmm. Bern- Bernie mm-hmm. Doodle. She. They had matching Christmas pajamas. I did not know they bought them. I was not wrong expecting with that. that when That's I came awesome. down. Yes, yeah, so yeah. the dog the dog was wearing pajamas. Sorry, you, you mentioned level. PJs. No, That's, that was good. the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> I like it. Uh, but we did continue our Christmas series uh, yesterday. It was a fantastic day here at Vaughn Forest Church. The worship was fantastic. Uh, I was incredibly excited to get to bring the message as we kind of began to wrap up uh, this series, Hidden Christmas. And uh, I want to talk a little bit. And Adam, I think you could kind of speak into this. You know, we, we, we talked a little bit about prophecy at the beginning of it, and we talked about how God was kind of always working out his plan of salvation all throughout the Old Testament. And uh, I guess, in your opinion, how does hearing that God is a planner and has been constantly working out this plan, constantly writing the story, how does that bring us hope, especially during this Christmas season? Because nothing's ever caught God off guard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I heard someone say one time, has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? So, yeah, (laughs) that's a good point. You know, there's never been an emergency meeting by the Trinity. Like, there's never been a point in all of human history where they were like, what? We didn't see that one coming. So, God is sovereign, and and God reigns, and God planned salvation before the foundations of the earth, and this has Mm -hmm. always been part of His plan. Right. And um, Mm -hmm. God has been faithful to... Um, execute that plan the way he saw fit and the timing he saw fit. Sure. So that gives me great confidence that God will see that plan through to its completion because yeah. we're not fully yet on the other side of God um, content, God finishing every step of the plan. And right. so, yeah, I mean, for me, it does nothing but bring great assurance and confidence that we can trust God and trust in his promises. Mm, that's really good. So why open up our talk yesterday talking about prophecy? You know, when I think of Christmas, I don't really think of like prophecy. So right. why is that so important to the birth of Christ and Jesus's life? So you know, we were talking yesterday about how Jesus is the gift of Emmanuel, literally God with us. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty big claim, right? For someone to come to this planet and say, "Oh, by the way, I'm also fully yeah. God." Like that's yeah. a pretty big deal. And so I think, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about prophecy, you know, especially, you know, the prophecies about the birth of Jesus was because all of these prophecies give validity that Jesus was who he claims to be. Right. You know, Adam talks there about like the hope, you know, mm-hmm. that the prophecies give that nothing caught God off guard. And again, it shows us that God was constantly kind of, you know, he was constantly working out this plan. Yeah. That it wasn't something that, oh, by happenstance, this is just when Jesus happened to go. No, 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 no. God had been preparing it every single step of the way. And so you have this baby born in a manger who is fully God, fully man, and he claims, hey, I am God. You know, mm-hmm. before all these people were born, I am. Like, that's yeah. a really, really right. big claim. Yeah. And so I think these prophecies really, they give us a lot of confidence that Jesus was who okay. he says he was, and I think that's that's so important because you know we talked a little bit, and we'll, we'll jump in this a little in in a bit. That like if Jesus was Emmanuel, that has a lot of implications, you know, for the rest of our life. Yeah, yeah. So we used incarnation a lot yesterday. Yep. Um, so you know, unpack that. What does the word mean, and why is that important? Yeah. So uh, again, I mentioned this during the message yesterday that uh, there's a great quote. From the Chronicles of Narnia, the book, The Last yeah, Battle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where Lucy, Queen Lucy, she says that there was once born on our planet uh, in a manger, <clears throat> someone, something that was bigger than our entire world. Mm-hmm. In other words, yeah, she's yeah, talking about, yeah. you know, God, you know, Jesus. And, and I don't think, you know, we hear the Christmas story so often and we, we think about, oh, the baby in the manger, fully God, fully man, Emmanuel here to dwell with us. Like, we don't stop and consider that because we've heard this Christmas story so much growing up <laughs> yeah, our entire lives. Right. Like, the full implications of that. That is a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember uh, going to Passion. I think it was in 2005 or 2006 uh, when it was in Nashville. You know, they had it a couple of years up in Nashville. Oh, yeah. And Louis Giglio that. was yeah. there, and he did his How Great Is Our God sermon. You know, the one where he goes through, yeah. like, the planets yeah, and yeah, the solar yeah, yeah, system yeah, yeah. and the stars and all that. Didn't Francis Chan do something like that, too? I think maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I remember sitting there listening to this, and he does a great job. He brings all these visuals into it. Yeah. And the whole point of the sermon is that God is very, 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 very big, and we are very, very, very small. <laughs> and when yeah. you look at the scope of the entire universe and you realize that, that God holds all of that in the palm of his hand, mm-hmm. like that begins, I think, to right-size it a little bit for us, the fact 
how big of a deal it was that the God of the universe then put on flesh as a helpless baby and is laying in a manger asleep in Bethlehem that mm-hmm. then some guy with a drum decides it'll be a good idea to come over there and wake him up with a drum solo. Did that really happen? No, I don't think so. <laughs> and I love that song, Little Drummer Boy, yeah. but it always cracks me for up. A, like, like, why would you go yeah. like, hey, can I play for him on my drum? Like, he, would no, have, he would have the plexiglass around him. Right, right. that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> but, you know, I guess my point, you know, the reason we talk so much about the incarnation, you know, yesterday is just because, like, this is a huge deal. And if God literally mm-hmm. walked among us, then it has huge implications for the rest of our lives. So everything you said there about what Louis was referencing with how big God is and how small we are, yeah. all of that applies equally to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so right. we have the Trinity in perfect existence. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So God the Father whatever comes to mind when I say that phrase has never changed any type of form or Mm. function. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when your kid says, who created God? God. God has always existed. (laughs) Nobody created God. Right. So God, you know, bigger than our minds can comprehend. Holy Spirit, whatever you think of when I say form or function, it has been the same since the beginning of all beginnings of all beginnings, okay? Not the case with Jesus. Hmm. So we have Hmm. the preexistent Son that's part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And and when we say that Jesus stepped out of heaven and stepped down to earth, where was Jesus during the nine months that Mary was pregnant? So let's unpack that for a second, okay? Is he just still hanging out in heaven (laughs) until he's about to be born? No, like he stepped out of heaven and stepped out on into earth. So the Holy Spirit involved in the miraculous conception of Jesus, and he develops as a baby. Mm. So the miracle of the incarnation is that this is the God man. Mm. Yeah. So Jesus's form did change right. permanently. Right. So you have the pre-existent Jesus. Jesus is God all the way up until birth, or we would say nine months previous to birth, (laughs) he becomes a person. So he'd never been a person before. He'd never been a man before. Right. right. So in the Trinity, Jesus does change form and function to now become the God man. Mm. This is a miracle of all miracles. And if, if you believe this like we do, Nothing else about the Bible should be difficult to accept. That's right. <laughs> right. Because, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I actually respect it when someone goes, I ain't buying that, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, at least you're being honest and saying it takes a lot for me to accept that. And I think sometimes Christians, again, familiarity with the story, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, we really processed this and thought this through the implications you talked about of what this actually means that Jesus came to earth. And, yeah. and then while he was here on earth, he grew in stature, he grew in development. He mm-hmm. grew. I mean, he wasn't playing hide and seek as a five year old and knowing everybody was when right. he was, you know, he, he actually had to go find them. You know, <laughs> right. so like he grew and he developed and he learned. Wait, and he, you know, he, and, and so there's all of these things about Jesus as the God man that are just absolutely <clears throat> ridiculous when you really stop to think about it. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's Christmas. He's born in a manger. Right. You know, here we go. Yeah. On to the new year. But it's like, yeah. man, that. So again, everything about our faith starts. Really, with this idea that God would come to earth in the form of his son, Jesus, in right. order to rescue us. Now, there's a lot of other steps that are going to take place That's after right. that. Right. But yeah, the, the story of our faith, really, there is no story without Christmas and this yeah. idea that Jesus would actually do this. Right. That's well, absolutely right. You know, and you're kind of hitting on this a little bit, but like my next question was like, you said that the in, if the incarnation was real, then, then everything else was yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. Um, so kind of break that down for us. I mean, you're kind of hitting on that already, but I I like that topic. Um, so like, how does Jesus's birth conclude that everything else about what we believe is true? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it hits a lot on what Adam just said. I mean, you know, there's a lot of theologians I was researching this idea of the incarnation that would say that, that God putting on flesh and coming to earth, like that was the, that was the biggest miracle. I mean, it all starts with that, mm-hmm. you know, like Adam said. Yeah. So you're like, yeah, there's lots of other miracles that God does, and I'm not trying to to make little of any of those. I mean, the, a, a miracle is a miracle yeah, is a miracle. Right. And, you know, a lot of these prophecies that we talked about earlier, some people have tried to make the case, well, there could have been a baby born in Bethlehem that then went to Egypt, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, Although if you, if thing, you yeah. add up all of those yeah. prophecies, the, the odds of coincidence go out the window really, really quick. Yeah. But when you talk about the virgin birth, the immaculate conception, like that is miracle. That yeah. is miracle territory. And, uh, and so, yeah. And so if that is real, which it is, and all of the evidence, both biblical and extra biblical, the prophecy, every bit of it, 
points to it being real. If that is real, mm -hmm. then that means everything that he said is real. And that means that everything that we believe about our faith is 100% real. And for me, yeah. that gives me a lot of confidence. And that, yeah. that inspires a lot of hope uh, for me as well. Yeah. You're talking earlier about you know the plan <clears throat> and what assurances give sure. us. So here's a couple of helpful phrases. So God planned salvation. Jesus accomplished salvation. And the Holy Spirit applies to salvation. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So when you wow. see how the Trinity works together... And you see how part of, again, now we're looking backwards because we say the birth is like the substantial thing that everything hinges on. Well, we know that now because Jesus was faithful to live the perfect right, life, right, go to the right, cross, yeah. defeat death through the resurrection. So now we can look back on that. But then we also have to recognize that Jesus' ascension plays into this as well. That's right. Because yeah. now he's able to sit at the right hand of the Father and be our intercessor for us yeah. while simultaneously setting up the sending of the Holy Spirit mm. for the start of the church. Right. And so Jesus knew that people empowered by the Holy Spirit could spread the gospel faster than him continuing to do ministry with 12 guys. Yeah. So right. all of this, were, and, and if you really just start looking at all the pieces together, again, it, it should build confidence, it should build assurance, and it should be a reminder the, the foundation of our faith is not unicorns and fairy tales. Right. There's right. substance yeah, yeah. to this. Right. And and this is this is this is real stuff. This yeah. is stuff that's weighty that you've got to wrestle with because you know there there's a lot of things that confront you when you really start looking at yeah. what actually happened and yeah. whether or not you're going to accept it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that's why you know I love what you said there about how this is not unicorns and fairy tales. I yeah. love how Matthew starts the Christmas story. He starts it with genealogy. Like yeah. you know, so much of the time we think like genealogy stuff, especially in the Old Testament, can be you know, kind of boring for like a better word. Uh, but like when you look at it, like Matthew is grounding all of this in fact. He's saying mm -hmm. like all of this happened. And, uh, and I also like what you said earlier about how everything that's true about Jesus is also true of the Holy Spirit. And we've talked about yeah. this several times on the podcast about how, you know, I would much rather have, like, left to me, I would rather have the person of Jesus sitting next to me. No offense, yeah. Matt. Uh, but I would much <laughs> rather have the person of Jesus sitting next to me. But what you said is so important about God accomplishing his purpose, and that's why Jesus said it's actually better to have the Holy Spirit. I think that's really, really good. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I think something that was really kind of cool yesterday, and you pointed this out, it says Jesus' claim to deity means that uh, we have a decision to make. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you said that it leads to an intellectual challenge mm -hmm. and then also a personal crisis. Sure. So uh, let's unpack that a little bit for our listeners that weren't there yesterday. Yeah. So, I mean, intellectual challenge and a personal crisis. So the intellectual challenge is like you look at the evidence, you look at the claims yeah. and, and like, yeah, like we have to process that. But there's a difference between like a challenge and a crisis. To me, a challenge is a problem that maybe you can work through, you can come back to it. It's not something mm -hmm. that demands yeah. immediate action or our immediate attention. Whereas a crisis, like something pops up, you know, with your family yeah, or something in your life, like a crisis is something that you have to make a choice. You yeah. have to act. There has yeah. to be you drop a decision. Everything and right. Go, yeah. And so if Jesus is who he claims to be, then the implication for our life is that our life is not about us, that, yeah. <laughs> that there is more beyond this life. And so that means that we have a decision that we have to make. We have to decide what we're going to do with this Jesus who claims that I am God. And that's why it leads to kind of a personal crisis in our life. Yeah. So line up the columns. You know, the pros and the cons. Yeah. So I agree with what you're saying there. Like, you got to make a decision about this. And so if you're not going to buy into everything we're talking about, mm -hmm. you're going to buy into another type of worldview that basically says this life is everything there is, right. or there's something you have to do in this life that would determine what you get to do in the next life. And so good luck with that, because we're all messed up and <laughs> right. screw our lives up all the time. Right. So this idea that this world is all there is, when people die, you never get to experience them again. Um, if if you have some type of ailment on this earth, that's all that you ever got an opportunity to live out. Whereas our worldview would say, no, part of what we believe that we've experienced in salvation is the promise of a resurrected body with God for all of eternity, that nothing about this world has the final world mm -hmm. word, that yeah. nothing about our lives here has the final word, that if you're looking for any type of message of hope that can only be been, be found in the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And so there are times that questions are posed and the goodness of God is 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 brought into question because 
you know, how could such a good God let all these kind of terrible things happen? And I think the, the, the counterpoint to that would be, if you can unpack for me how your worldview gets us to a more gracious and good entity being thought process philosophy, I'm all ears. I hadn't found it yet. Yeah. Right. Because right. only what we believe has a God that ultimately says, yes, temporary and momentary death and struggle that has been defeated and you will experience fully what that defeat of death looks like one day with me for all yeah. eternity through Jesus Christ. Yeah. So there, there's no other story that it offers anything close to the hope that the gospel you know, brings forth. And that's really what we celebrate at Christmas is because, as you've said over and over in this series, this light came to earth. That's right. Yeah. It didn't yeah. spring up from the earth. That's right. So, so God had to rescue us by sending Jesus. And so yeah. the full implications of this are way beyond Mary and Joseph looking at a manger <laughs> right. with a right. drummer boy. You know, th- th- this, yeah. is, drummer this boy. is all of life that you have yeah. to really, you know, right. the, the weight of this. Yeah. I think what you said there is so important. I actually recently had a conversation with a friend of mine, and he was asking some deep questions about faith. And he was basically asking about, you know, it's it's the old why did bad things happen to, to good people kind of argument. And, and we could spend many podcasts, you know, talking about that. Well, it only that. happened once in human history, and his name was Jesus. That's right. Go yeah. on. I understand yeah, yeah, the point. Right, yeah. Uh, which, again, the real question is, why does anything good happen yeah. to us when why we're so wretched? Why do good things happen but, to bad people? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the, but I understand the thought. Yeah, that's right. And, and one of the things that we were talking about that we got to was that you have to kind of right-size this life and as much as we can in our finite human mind's eternity, but that when you view things from an eternal perspective, a lot more about this stuff kind of, I think, clicks into place and makes more sense. Yeah. Well, you know, we're talking about implications from that. So two of them yesterday was um, because uh, Jesus was God, we have hope. Mm -hmm. And because Jesus was man, he can relate to us and give us comfort. So I really like that. But, you know, I was thinking through that. um, Unfortunately, Christmas season can be pretty challenging for yeah, some folks um, uh, for many different reasons. But um, so for those people that are kind of walking through this season, the Christmas season, and kind of struggling um, and feeling kind of hopeless with that with this season, what is the encouragement that you guys would <clears throat> give and hope uh, that you can give from these truths? Yeah, so— We mentioned this a little bit in the message yesterday. You know, I I know there have been times in my life where I've walked through like a difficult season, Mm -hmm. you know, and and I know that folks listening to this maybe are currently walking that season, have walked through that season. I think back to those times and, you know, people would come up to me and say, hey, man, praying for you. I'm there for you. And I really appreciated that. I really did. And they had the best of intentions. But in my mind, oftentimes, if I'm just being honest, I was thinking, you don't really know what I'm going through. Yeah. But then someone would come up who had been through what I've been through, mm-hmm. and they would say, hey, man, there's there's hope on the other side of this. Yeah. And to me, that was what gave me a little bit of hope that, hey, I'll be able to move through the situation. Again, it's why things like support groups exist for people that have dealt yeah. with similar situations. And the writer of Hebrews says that Jesus was fully man in every way, that he experienced everything right. that we experience. And I think knowing that, that we have a God who is able to empathize with us in our Mm -hmm. weaknesses, a God who has endured all that we endured and still, you know, came out on the other side of it and offers us hope to me during this season. That's what I think can maybe help offer folks a little more hope that Jesus experienced loss. He experienced pain. He experienced the death of family and friends and all these situations. And he knows what we go through. And uh, you know, we said this at our remembrance service last mm-hmm. night that God can handle our questions and God yeah. can handle our pain and our suffering. And so I do think that, you know, in this season, like, yes, it's important to run to God, but to also remember, as we've said many times on this podcast, yeah. like, God gave us each other. Like, God's plan for the pain is his people. Yeah. And to me, like, that offers a little bit of hope, especially, you know, during the season where folks are struggling with that many times. Yeah. I think if you've experienced loss and this is a difficult season, part of What I would like to encourage you with is you're ultimately expressing your trust in God when you release whatever expectation you had of how you would prefer it to have worked out differently. Mm, Interesting. You're, You're releasing that to God. You're saying, God, from my perspective... I wish things would have gone better, but I am going to actively trust Mm -hmm. that from your perspective, things went as good as they possibly could have gone beyond anything I could imagine. And one day when I'm with you, all of that will make sense. Right. If you lose someone and they're with God, they win. You should always keep that in mind. That's right. If you lose someone and they are with God, they win. You ever thought about the story of Lazarus from his perspective? (laughs) 
So Jesus shows <laughs> up you and just we, said that. <laughs> we study this story and it's like everybody's boohooing and Jesus is like they've been he's been in there four days and they're like he stinketh and that's the only time we see the word stinketh in the Bible and Jesus you know goes over there and he says Lazarus come forth and and here he comes and everybody's like cheering. Except for Lazarus. <laughs> He's like, bro. He was stinketh. I mean, he'd what been in happened, heaven man? for four days. So can you imagine? It's like, you know, he's sitting there getting his mansion all fixed up, you know, and somebody's <laughs> Lazarus like, knocking on the door. You know, we don't do this often, but um, <laughs> Jesus is calling you back down to earth. Jesus said this. You got to go, like, man. like, man, my knee that's been bothering my whole life, it finally wasn't hurting. What that's do you right. mean I got to go back? And so, you know, I'm trying to have a little fun there. That's but hilarious. the idea is like, if you get Jesus, you win. Mm. So we're the ones that are left with the pain. We're left with the heartache. We're left with the the, the reality that we miss someone's presence. So part of what you're doing is you're releasing your expectations of how you thought it would have gone and declaring, I trust you, God, period. There's no, like, ifs. There's no as long as. It's like, Mm -hmm. I trust you. The other thing I would encourage you with, and this one's hard, is having joy doesn't mean that you no longer miss the person who's not with you. That person Mm -hmm. who's not with you would want you to have joy. Right. Right. They would yeah. want you to move forward in life walking in the fullness of your joy that comes from salvation, mm-hmm. yeah. not from circumstance. And so sometimes it can be difficult when you've experienced loss to actually give yourself permission to feel whole or to experience joy again. Right. Because you feel in doing that, you're violating somehow the reality that this person is no longer here. Right. Right. But what yeah. I would say is that that person would want you to move forward yeah. in joy yeah. because that person loved you. And so this can be a really challenging time of the year, but it could also mm-hmm. be the crucible that God's bringing you through to bring about healing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really and good. so maybe instead of seeing this as a time of the year to avoid or a time of year to endure or a time of year to get through. Can I tell you what you're setting yourself up for? That same cycle every 12 months. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. this could be a season that God's bringing you through to heal you, not in a way where you move on with your life. We never move on from losses. We move forward and those losses become a part of who we are. Right. But God can heal you in this season. This doesn't yeah. just have to be a season that you're trying to get through painfully. This could be the way that God's bringing. You know, David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, you're walking through that valley. Yeah. At no point do you stop and pitch a tent in the valley. You yeah. keep moving yeah. through. And yes, you rely on God's people. And yes, you rely on support. Unless you rely on God's word. But part of that also is is in me trying to say to you as your pastor, like say, hey, God, set me on this course. Yeah. yeah. Set me on this course. I want to be able to trust you. And I want to be able to move forward in joy. Show me the path to get me there. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Good, yeah. And and as you do that, people can come around you and encourage you and love on you. But but let me encourage you. You you, you can you can you can experience wholeness again. Mm-hmm. Because wholeness has only ever been found through a relationship with Jesus Christ, right. which is why we're talking about this. Because right, right, the Christmas yeah. story is really how we see this starting to happen for the first yeah. time. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's good. So one of the things we talked about yesterday was how God humbled himself. We, you know, we were talking about the incarnation, Emmanuel, that literally, I don't think we could fathom the amount to which God humbled himself. And then Paul in Philippians talks about how he took on the nature of a servant. And we know that we're called to imitate Christ, you know, to imitate what he's done. And so as we imitate this, what are some ways that we can do that, especially here at Christmas? What are ways that we can serve one another and imitate Christ as he took on this nature of a servant? Well, yeah, I mean, the passage you're referring to is one of the deepest passages in the Bible that Mm. talks about that Jesus emptied himself. He didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but rather emptied himself and humbled himself to the point of servant, even to death on a cross, Paul says, which was Paul's way of bringing about emphasis. He's like, he didn't just die in his bed while he was asleep. He died a bloody death on a cross. The crazy thing about that whole passage is what you started the question with. It starts off by saying your attitude should be the same as. Right. Right. So that's actually not supposed to be a theological truth for us to understand about Jesus. <laughs> it's a command for us to put into practice. Right. Unpack that for a little yeah, while, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when Paul says Jesus emptied himself, and theologians debated this for hundreds of years, and finally we figured it all out, and now we can benefit from their hard work. But he's not saying Jesus didn't possess the ability to be all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present, because if at any time Jesus doesn't have those things, he's no longer divine. He's no longer God. Right. Emptying himself, the kenosis, if you will, is a fancy theological term for that, means he laid aside the independent use 
of those divine attributes, Mm -hmm. the independent use. So if I'm being challenged to lay aside the independent use of strengths that I have, the practical takeaway for that is to be humble, give up the right to be right, Mm -hmm. lose an argument every now and then. Right. Right. Look at your spouse and say, I still love you. It's okay. (laughs) <laughs> you know, don't fire back at your kids when they smart off for the 17th time, right? Right. Be, be compassionate to your friend or your neighbor. Let some things slide instead of making a big deal about it. Don't always be offended. You know, all of the things that basically our world isn't. Right. That's right. what right. this passage is saying, that those of us as Christ followers, if we live that way, we're going to stand out. Right. Because everybody else is living that way. Yeah, our whole right. society is so stinking uptight. Everybody's just wound so tight. Everybody's always upset, blowing up, getting mad, exploding, getting their feelings hurt, getting offended. Just take a deep breath and walk with Jesus. Yeah. You're going to be okay. Be yeah. right. Humble yourself. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Let me have yeah. to be a doormat or get run over or give up your rights. I'm not getting goofy, crazy like that. I'm just saying in your everyday life with the people you're around, if you walk that way and you live that way, they're going to experience the grace of God just through you. Mm, that's good. That's really good, yeah. Well, point six was uh, yesterday was because— Jesus is Emmanuel. Uh, we can know him personally. Mm-hmm. And we said uh, many times that Emmanuel means God with us. Right. So what? describe for me the impact daily that that has on us. Yeah. So there, there's three kind of components to this idea of Emmanuel. Like he is God, mm-hmm. he is man, and he is with us. Like okay. that's the three different yeah. parts of Emmanuel. And we talked about this a little bit in the message yesterday about how, like, again, this doesn't blow our minds, honestly, like it should. I mean, when you look at... Every time in the Old Testament that people encountered the Lord, like the immediate reaction usually was, I'm dead, or it was worse. I mean, (laughs) I think about Isaiah going into the temple and he's like, I'm undone because I'm a sinner. Or, you know, I mean, even when people would just see the angels of the Lord in the Old Testament, like they would always try to worship and Mm -hmm. they'd be like, no, don't do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So if, if he is with us, if we can know him personally, then that changes everything. Mm -hmm. That changes everything about how we live. And we talked about all these different implications, but the privilege that we have of knowing the Lord on a personal level, these folks in the Old Testament, they would have lost their minds over this. I mean, this was totally different. The fact that the Holy Spirit dwells in us when we become Mm -hmm. believers, followers of Jesus, and uh, it it just means that everything about our life changes and that we can have that personal relationship with the Lord. Talk about, you know, the everyday implication of Jesus and and being with us. And um, so Jesus, if you're listening right now and you've experienced salvation, like Jesus is near. Mm. Jesus is with you. Yeah. You have the promise of his presence. Yeah. But what are you supposed to do when you don't feel that, when you don't Mm. sense that? We, We don't live our lives out by statements written on paper. We right. live our lives out by the way that we express ourselves emotionally and intellectually. And it's like, I'm not feeling that. That yeah. may be true. I'm not, what am I supposed to do? It reminds me of a story. Uh, not a story. It reminds me of an experience. I've, I've gone through this with all three boys. I, I don't know if you had to do this with your, with your daughters. But all three of my boys, when they were learning how to sleep on a mattress— no longer in a baby bed, mm-hmm. okay? So we have to go through all the phases. Yep. You, know, you remove the gate and you do all uh-huh. this. Stuff. So, so we're at a point now where they're not fully into a kid bed, but they're sleeping kind of in what used to be called a crib. I don't know all the terminology, yeah, but it's the about. idea that it's a change yeah. and yeah. it's different. Yeah. And with all three of them, you know, I would stay in there with them and or sometimes Morgan, but I've tried to always kind of drive nighttime. That's kind of my time to yeah. spend time talking with them and stuff. So anyway, you know, they were they were scared. That's where I'm going with all this. Mm-hmm. I remember this distinctly, all three of them. And in and, and our boys' rooms, we always had some kind of chair. Right. The chairs have gotten nicer over the years, but like sometimes <laughs> some kind of chair. Right. For some when they were babies, we could hold them and rock them. And so like they're at ground level. I don't want to lay on the floor. I'm just going to sit in the chair and, you know, sing to them or read a story to them or, hey, dad's here. I'm with you. You're not alone. It's right. okay. There's nothing to be right. scared of. It never worked. Yeah. It didn't work. I could sit there and tell them until I'm blue in the face. I am literally in the same room with you, two-year-old son. Like, yeah. I'm right here. Yeah. Everything's okay. With all three of them, I had to lay down on the floor, mm-hmm. look at them in the eye, and hold their hand until they fell asleep. Now, what's happening there? Well, my presence drew closer, and it brought about comfort. Mm. I was in the same room, but it wasn't until I was close that they knew I was in the same room. So what's the application there? If you're not feeling Jesus' presence in your life, what does God's Word say? Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Mm. Tell him that. Jesus, I I want you to come closer. 
Right. I'm that two-year-old. I need you to lay down on the floor <laughs> and get at my level so that I can experience yeah. your presence because I know it's true. I'm just not experiencing. And I'm not saying that instantaneously everything's going to get better. Right. But if you will make that a part of your prayer life where if you're not, just tell him, I'm not mm-hmm. feeling your presence. I need to experience your presence in a fresh way. I need to, but, and just see where the relationship goes. He may lead you to a part of scripture. He may lead you to a worship song. He may lead you to come to church or right. go catch right. a service on online or, or, or you may genuinely begin to sense wow i i do feel like his presence here i right. feel like the anxiety is, is going away so i'm just saying like yes he's there with you but if that's not the normal way you would describe your christian life then i would say start talking to him about that you just found where to start your prayer life yeah, yeah. i need to experience your presence in a more real way so that i know you're actually present with me the mm-hmm. same way my boys needed to know i was present with them it, and, and and your relationship with him will begin to grow yeah, that's, that's good. really good, man. Uh, well, Chad, you said something pretty interesting yesterday. You said uh, we can't embrace the word and stay the same. Hmm. Um, what um, What is your biggest hope for those listening to this message? Um, like, how do you hope listeners will embrace this story? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll answer that by by telling you guys my experience, yeah. similar to what you yeah. had, you know, with uh, with with your kids. So mine, I'm going to back it up to when Lena was was a lot younger, okay. and Christy actually has a picture of this somewhere. So I remember Lena; we had just gotten her home from the hospital, and uh, I'm sitting there watching TV or playing video games. I can't remember. What He's it was. playing video. Games. You're reading Probably your Bible. Video. Yeah, I was reading my Bible. <laughs> yep, having my quiet time. Yes, He's and there's quiet uh, time. and I just remember Lena, <laughs> and I've said before, nothing has taught me more about like the character of God than becoming a father. Mm. Like, you know, and I remember looking at Lena, she was curled up on my chest, she was asleep. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like how much I loved her. And I remember thinking like, there's no way I can express to her like truly how much I love Mm -hmm. this child. And then it kind of hit me like she knows, like she can't cognitively think at this point, but she knows that I'm safe. She knows that I'm there for her. She knows Mm -hmm. that I'm warm. She knows like just intuitively like this is dad. And so, you know, my hope for folks, you know, this season, as we talk about God with us, it's what Adam just said there. Like, it's about going to him. It's about knowing he's there. It's about feeling his presence. And even if you can't, knowing that God loves you, Mm -hmm. he is there for you. And like, we can't fathom in our finite human minds the depth of God's love for us. We just can't do it. But to know that he is there in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of whatever season, in the midst of our joy, in the midst of our happiness, gathered around with loved Mm -hmm. ones or not, like he is there for us. He is near to us. And I love what you said there about if you don't necessarily feel that, like draw near to him and right. he will draw near. I, I think that's fantastic. That's so and good. that would be my hope for everybody you yeah. know, this Christmas season, especially. That's good. Just talk to God about whatever's on your heart. I mean, this whole like idea that there's only certain prayers you can pray or, you know, hashtag third world problems. Like, come on. <laughs> right. Like right. What, what is bothering you right now? Right. right. Yeah. It's probably not missionaries in other countries. <laughs> now, should it be? We could play the should game all day. Right. But let me tell you, whatever's on your mind, whatever's on your heart, mm-hmm. that is literally the point of need that God says, bring that to me. Yeah. That's how good and gracious our God is. That's good. He doesn't judge or evaluate. He doesn't, really, that's what you want to talk about? Don't you know I have other things going on? <laughs> right. Do you know about right. these missionaries? Right. You know, don't yeah, you, yeah. What about the special Christmas offering Adam yeah. keeps talking about? <laughs> yeah. we, haven't that, talked about radar, we haven't huh? talked about that yet. That's not how God works. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever is going on, would you just talk to him about it? Yeah. yeah. Just talk to him about it. And as you do, God will build trust. You can talk about other things. You talk about bigger things. But yeah, think about Chad's parenting example there. I mean, our children don't begin to really listen to us about bigger things in life until we've demonstrated trustworthiness in the smaller things of life. I mean, right. we had to keep them alive for the first several years of their life just by feeding them, right? <laughs> I mean, they were doing everything so they could to not part be that of way. nurturing yeah. a child yeah. is, is all of that. And so you're building trust as a parent to the point, right. hopefully, when one day when they're a teenager and you look at them and go, hey, that's not something you should do. They're beginning now to go, all right, maybe I should listen. Right, all right, yeah. so just, just keep going to God. And at some point, like, yeah, you can start talking about bigger things, but let me tell you what the biggest thing is right now. Whatever's weighing on you. That's right. right. That is your yeah. big, okay? Yeah. So just go to him. And, and yeah, that's the hope of this season is that your relationship with God grows. <clears throat> that's right. Yeah. And relationships only grow through honesty. So just be honest <laughs> with God about yeah. what's going on in your life. That's, that's really good. good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So shifting gears a little bit, I do want to talk about our Christmas Eve service is coming up this weekend. Yeah, uh, depending Saturday. On when yeah, this Saturday. And so that's going to be at 4 p.m. Uh, this Saturday, December 24th, Christmas Eve every year. And uh, so, Matt, Adam, tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening at this thing. There's going to be a lot of music, yeah. a lot of Christmas 
uh, like, songs. Yeah, some of our favorite Christmas songs. Some of your all-time favorite. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I love it. Throwbacks. Yeah, our worship team always does a great job, yeah, and so they're going to do an amazing job. Um, we're going to have a little time for the kiddos, um, yeah. Yeah. so we're going to bring them down front, and if you're listening and your kids are really small and you want to accompany them down, that's obviously right. fine, and yeah. you know, yeah. we're going to give them a little gift, yeah. and um, don't worry, parents, it's not something they can eat, so I'm not going <laughs> to get them all hyped up on sugar before I send them home. Well, they're not you supposed know. to eat anyway. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, that's a good point. It's not edible, yeah. so they're not there supposed to eat yeah. it. Um, so that matters, because, you know, look, man, these little guys, you, 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 that's right. you got to cut them off from sugar at some point in the day, they'll <laughs> never right. go to sleep, that's so, right. so we're going to give them a little gift, it won't be something that Keeps them up all night. Um, it's not going to be a long service, sure, um, but it's going to be a meaningful time. We yeah. are going to have the candles that we light at the end, and mm-hmm. that's always one of my favorite things that we do. And yeah. it's just a, it's a, it's a great way to kind of end the year. This will be yeah. the last time we'll be together as a church family in 2022. We won't gather again until January 1st, 2023. Yep. So we we'll do. We have the devotion that's going out. I'm, I'm sure we talk about yeah. that in a moment. But yeah. but yeah, as far as Christmas Eve, if you're here. Listen, I know that that day is hectic. Right. I know it can be difficult to just drop everything and get away from an hour. Don't feel like you have to get all dressed up. Right. <laughs> throw on a ball cap and come on up here. <clears throat> That's right. We're not that church. Right. We're not going to judge you. We ain't fancy. We're not going to evaluate you. If you're in the middle of doing a bunch of stuff and you need to come up here and sweat, better to do that with your kids and go, well, I didn't have time to get dressed. Nobody right. cares. That's right. All right. So come on up here. Be yourself. Be comfortable. So many times we miss out on stuff because of all that. Yeah. Well, right. I didn't have time to get everybody ready you're right. you're clothed aren't you come yeah, on that's fine. let's go you know <laughs> so we this is i mean it, yeah. you know what i'm saying no i get it i, get I it, love yeah. it if everybody showed up in hats and sweats and, and took pictures in the lobby that'd be <laughs> awesome you know it's like christmas uh, we just want to be together as a yeah. christmas family that's as, a, right. as a church family on christmas okay? yeah we want to be together as yeah. a church family so be here it's yeah. going to be a meaningful time together yeah. and, and i love what you said how this is a family service you know so we, we've talked before about how we're not necessarily having child care this night because we do all want to be Together. together. And this is one of the few times out of the year where we get to do that. Right. And uh, I know some folks may think like, hey, my kids are kind of loud. But like, does yeah, not bother matter. us. Does yeah. not bother we us at all. That. Yeah. yeah that's we right. want that. We want that. That's you, Christmas. Your kids will remember these things. That's right. I mean, yeah. your earliest memory is two, three, four years old. Get them up here. Yeah. yeah. They'll remember getting that little gift. They'll remember sending everybody's candles. They'll remember singing. So yeah, be yeah. here. It's going to be yeah. a good experience. Yeah. yeah. I heard uh, one time somebody said, today's events and trips are tomorrow's memories. That's right. And so, that's right. And so yeah. like, that's going to be that's going to be what this is. So don't miss out. That's yeah. right. And so then on, so that's Saturday, December 24th, Sunday, less than a week away, Christmas Day, wow. uh, December 25th. Uh, there are no on-campus services. We're going to be yep. online with the devotion that day. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So when are we going to post that? 7 a.m. Yeah, it's going to be posted at 7 a.m. And then I think we're going to kind of, if folks want to, rebroadcast that kind of on the hour up until about noon, I think. Perfect. And yeah. that's VaughnForce.com, VaughnForce yep. YouTube channel, mm-hmm. that's Facebook. Right. Facebook. Facebook. That's correct. Okay. So um, about a 15 to 20 minute devotion and um, I'm just going to be sharing from my heart it's kind of tied to the idea of you know having gifts on Christmas and I think it'll be something that after you open gifts you know (laughs) Open up a phone, laptop, TV, whatever, however it is you <laughs> like to you? watch things and yeah. gather the family around and watch it and then have a great day with, yeah. with your family. Yeah. And if you're anything like my house, like the kids are going to be up already opening presents, like <laughs> that's not going to be a problem. They'll yeah. be up and you'll be up too. <laughs> and so this is a great thing to watch kind of after that. And then uh, January 1st, New Year's Day, one service at 930, both yeah. on campus and online. Uh, no 11 o'clock service that day. And then January 8th, 2023, we mm-hmm. are back into the back swing of things, yeah. 9.30 and 11 a.m. So we're really looking forward to that. Now, I also want to make a, a special note that we are going to be taking the next two weeks off uh, of the other six podcasts. Is this podcasts. our last 2022 podcast? This is it. This is, this this is, is it wow. right here. Yeah. Man. So for the last one for the year, so we will come back together. Was this our first full calendar year doing the podcast? Uh, that is correct. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because we had the- Monumental. The, we had Man. the birthday back in, yeah. uh, was it yeah, August was, or September? Yeah, we started uh, yeah, it yeah, in the fall the previous yeah. year. So yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so this. So we, we will take the next two weeks off, be back on, I believe, it's January 10th. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, back together. And so uh, we just want to say we appreciate everyone who tunes in, who listens to this. Uh, it really is so much fun yeah. for us to get to do this. And it's and we're so grateful that people, you know, actually listen to it. Like I'm always shocked when people tell me. We they hope to it's it. helping you grow closer to God. That's we're right. having fun. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. We have a good time with it. So anyway, we appreciate you and we appreciate you joining us today. So on behalf of Adam Bishop, Matt Collins, Sound Guy, Jonathan, myself, we want to say Merry Christmas and we look forward to seeing you in 2023. Happy New Year.